my name is Josh from Cyclone Soz and today another detailed forecast update coming your way for November 8th 2024. We've got a lot of severe thunderstorms to talk about across the southeast of Queensland and into the northeast of New South Wales with three separate outbreaks now on the forecast. We'll touch on that heat wave extending through central parts of Queensland and into the Northern Territory in WA. I'll give a tropical weather update as well and we'll recap on that tropical low that is a chance of formation in the Coral Sea and we'll also take a look at some general weather around the nation. All of that plus more coming up in today's weather forecast. If you are brand new to the channel, please consider subscribing. The support lately has been much appreciated, but let's get stuck straight into things over in the southeast of Queensland, where a severe thunderstorm outbreak is expected to take hold of the weather scene later on this afternoon and evening. Now let's break down what that means for you guys right now. You can see temperatures and you can probably feel as well temperatures already soaring once again across the southeast of Queensland, giving way for another very warm day and a lot of instability in the atmosphere. Now combining that with the onshore flow that we're currently expecting in the cold front that's currently moving through providing a lot of uh, fuel for these thunderstorms we will see a nice outbreak of potentially severe thunderstorms materialize from this afternoon early this afternoon only about one or two o'clock in the afternoon into the northeast of New South Wales outside of Coffs Harbour and Grafton a few thunderstorms expected and right out of the gate into the northeast of New South Wales they are likely to be severe with heavy rainfall damaging winds and large hailstones um, further up the coast as well up into the Gold Coast and Brisbane we will see some thunderstorms later on tonight however they're not as likely to be severe as we have been talking about in the last couple of days you can see the forecast has been back down once again for them which means that with this current downtrend in the forecast in terms of the intensity for these thunderstorms I'm not as inclined in saying as a widespread outbreak is expected across the southeast of Queensland not tonight at least I'm more going to say that a couple of severe thunderstorms are possible here and there especially further up the Sunshine Coast up towards Maroochydore, Coolum, Noosa uh, and even further north up towards Gympie and Rainbow Beach will see a couple of severe thunderstorms move through that area but in terms of a severe thunderstorm outbreak it's more so just going to be a couple of storms firing up here and there with a chance of going severe. Brisbane is a chance of a thunderstorm as well tonight. I wouldn't get my hopes up too high for a thunderstorm across Brisbane uh, but still there is going to be a couple of storms in the area and some suburbs will get a pretty good storm or two uh, in terms of heavy rainfall damaging winds. So a chance of some large hailstones as well and plenty of lightning for some of these suburbs but for for the most part a lot of people are going to be disappointed tonight and they will miss out unfortunately. Gold Coast should get a couple of good storms and out towards the scenic rim as well they'll get a couple of good storms. Further inland out towards Roma and then into the agricultural district south of Rolleston, Injun and Chalaville there will be a couple of thunderstorms out there. Whether they go severe or not still a little bit uncertain at this time but they will uh, still get a couple of storms later on tonight which could drop a good couple of drops of rainfall for a few locations. Much needed rainfall out there they're going through a bit of a dry period right now. Later on tonight these thunderstorms will extend up towards Bundaberg, Agnes Water, Gladstone and maybe even as far north as Rockhampton. A couple of good drops of rainfall are possible here and there but for the most part again unfortunately I wouldn't be getting your hopes up across central Queensland's coast for a bit of rainfall. It looks like it's going to be pretty disappointing for the most part these thunderstorms tonight. It's been hyped up as a pretty good severe thunderstorm outbreak. I've seen a lot of articles on Facebook especially about this being a pretty monster outbreak but for the time being I mean it's really difficult to uh, get worried about this just having a look at the forecast here considering that we've seen much more um, precarious situations on the forecast than this one here so calling this a severe thunderstorm outbreak is really a bit of a stretch but I reckon there still will be a good couple of severe thunderstorms particularly into the northeast of New South Wales outside of Lismore I'm just saying it how it is certainly nothing to get worried about at this time but unfortunately nothing to get excited about for your Friday evening either so there's going to be a quiet day a couple of storms expected here and there outside of uh, Mount Perry that sort of general area. Sunday we will get a much bigger uh, round of action compared to Saturday and even this afternoon and the evening further inland out towards Roma and Injun. A good line of thunderstorms is expected to fire up there and some of these could potentially be severe especially later on to the afternoon and the evening around 7 or 8 p.m. on Sunday. A line of squalls is expected to materialize and then begin its march further towards the uh, east. We will see a very nice line of squall thunderstorms with some heavy rainfall damaging and locally destructive winds extending between Stanthorpe, Warwick and Toowoomba right through Chinchilla and Tarum and out towards Rolleston and maybe even as far north as Jericho as well and out towards Emerald. Some good thunderstorms are possible there. This wall will actually be slow moving enough to cause some serious problems with rainfall. We'll touch on this in greater detail on Sunday but this time some very good falls are possible around the Toowoomba and Warwick area on Sunday night into very early Monday morning which is great to see. Again they do need the rainfall out there. And now for the second severe thunderstorm outbreak and this one really does have me concerned for Monday. We've got a perfect setup 
pretty much for severe thunderstorms into the northeast of New South Wales, and some of these will cross the border into the southeast of Queensland and cause some pretty significant problems there. You can see from about 2 p.m. on Monday, the 11th of November, in the afternoon hours, we will see a line of thunderstorms develop around Grafton, Coffs Harbour, and then inland towards Armidale, and even out towards Tamworth as well. We'll see some good thunderstorms develop uh, in this general area here. Um, that's because of a low-pressure system just situated offshore in a coastal trough extending down the southeastern Queensland coastline into the northeast of New South Wales. A huge amount of instability in the air and plenty of fuel for these thunderstorms, just providing the perfect setup for severe thunderstorms. Now, the main worry on Monday is going to be slow-moving supercell thunderstorms with giant hailstones damaging and locally destructive winds and heavy and locally intense rainfall across some locations. This is a very concerning setup here. Just take a look at how far the eastern Gulf is taking some of these thunderstorms. Uh, typically, when I see red, I like to call severe thunderstorms on the forecast, but we're seeing a wide expanse of red and then areas into the purple and the black, which indicates very heavy rainfall uh, for these locations up here. And for the forecast models to be suggesting this, you know they mean business with a severe thunderstorm outbreak expected. And severe thunderstorms as well, not isolated to this corner of New South Wales. They're extending out into central South Queensland as well, outside of Charleville and Longreach. A couple of good thunderstorms also possible out there Monday afternoon and evening. You can see by around 7 or 8 p.m. local time in Queensland, they jump the border outside of Stanthorpe and Warwick, and they do cause some problems there with some very heavy falls. In short, this is definitely a severe thunderstorm outbreak that I want to take in much greater, uh, take a look at in much greater detail on Monday morning. But at this time here, certainly something worth watching for their damaging winds, large hailstones, and heavy rainfall threat across the southeast and the south central parts of Queensland. This is something that really needs to be taken seriously. Some pretty powerful thunderstorms do look possible now on the cards for this part of Queensland. And then Tuesday, more thunderstorms expected to fire up. They will be uh, a little bit more widespread actually on Tuesday as well, extending right down the New South Wales coastline, powered by a low pressure system inland from New South Wales and then offshore and just this beautiful coastal trough is going to extend, creating a chance of severe thunderstorms between Gympie down towards Coffs Harbour, including Lismore, Brisbane and the Gold Coast on Tuesday afternoon. And then another area of potentially severe thunderstorms inland outside of Moree and Tamworth in the northeast of New South Wales and thunderstorms extending right down the New South Wales coastline along the Great Dividing Range and even as far inland as about Dubbo and then down towards Parks and Young in uh, much more inland rural New South Wales. Some pretty good severe thunderstorms possible right throughout the state. This is definitely something that I want to be taking a look at on the day of the event here but just the heads up Tuesday is going to be a very stormy one across eastern Australia. Southeastern Queensland actually seems to miss out on all of the stormy stuff they do get a nice line of thunderstorms later on Tuesday afternoon and evening, just the kind of residual thunderstorms kind of combining into a big squall line expected on Tuesday evening. Very typical weather for this time of the year. And it's certainly an event that we've seen many times before, but a pretty powerful squall line looks possible on Tuesday afternoon heading into the Brisbane and the Gold Coast area. Tuesday evening, actually, it's going to be much later on in the night, probably at around 8 to 10 p.m. local time. But again, certainly something that I want to take a look at in greater detail on the day. And then it's just turbulent weather right through Wednesday, Thursday and Friday across the southeast of Queensland and into the northeast of New South Wales. Wednesday, Thursday and Friday, rain and storms pretty much dominating the weather scene across parts of Queensland and then into uh, the northeast of New South Wales. And this rainfall is really going to quickly add on for parts of the northeast of New South Wales as well. This is something that I also wanted to take a look at was rainfall accumulations. We'll get to that in just a second. But, but um, I would just like to briefly to, uh, finish off on the Monday and Tuesday severe thunderstorm outbreak and talk about what's driving this. So like I did say, we've got that low pressure system offshore, but we've also got extreme humidity values and a lot of heat, which is going to be providing the necessary conditions for these thunderstorms to really milk in the atmosphere across the northeast of New South Wales and into parts of the southeast of Queensland, with humidity values nearing 100%, temperature values well up into the high 20s and early 30s. You've got plenty of instability, plenty of fuel for these thunderstorms to make the most of. And when you combine it with instability from those low pressures and trough lines extending here and there, you really do uh, give way to a nasty outbreak of thunderstorms on the forecast. And I mean, these thunderstorms, they're going to make the most of it. That's just the way it goes. You can see convective available potential energy values as well. They're not through the roof or anything. They are high, but for this time of the year and for the thunderstorm outbreak that we're seeing on the forecast, could you imagine if we were seeing values twice as high as this? We would be talking about some thunderstorms rivaling the Boxing Day and Christmas Day thunderstorms of last year across uh, this part of Australia. Thankfully, we're not looking at very high convective available potential energy values, but we've still got plenty of instability in the atmosphere for these thunderstorms to go potentially severe. It's just they're not going to be lasting too long as severe thunderstorms. They will rapidly upscale into kind of rain bombs and moving 
into uh, metro areas closer to the coastline. So again, that is a bit of good news here. It does take the edge of these off these thunderstorms, but still though, some pretty nasty severe ones do look possible. And Tuesday as well, those Cape values not looking too flash. I mean, they're still really good across this part of Queensland and New South Wales, but just considering the nature of the thunderstorms that we're seeing on the forecast, it isn't as high as I expected. So that is some good news, I guess. And just to round out the central coast uh, forecast, I would like to talk about 10 day rainfall accumulations as well. They're looking very healthy across this part of New South Wales and into the southeast of Queensland. Peak accumulations over the next 10 days outside of Lismore and Grafton expected to be up towards 150 millimetres. And that's just going to be from that steady pylon of thunderstorms. Uh, some locations will pick up much more than this over the next 10 days, and some will pick up substantially less. But this rainfall really is going to add up across uh, the northeast of New South Wales and into the southeast of Queensland. I mean, even outside of Boona and Bow Desert, rainfall expected to uh, exceed 100 millimetres over the next 10 days and the majority of that falling after about Monday through to Sunday the 11th to the 17th of November. So some really good falls do look possible here. Great uh, rainfall, much needed as well. Um, they are looking a little bit drier in some places, especially further inland. I mean, take a look at this. We're looking at mild to moderate drought-like conditions extending across a lot of New South Wales. So this rainfall here is going to be very, very welcome indeed, especially closer to the coastline. They do desperately need that rainfall. But central parts of Queensland could also definitely go for some rainfall at this time. So unfortunately, it's not going to be as widespread as we would like, but still some good falls certainly do look possible at this time. Now let's talk about something tropical up into the Northern Territory, WA and parts of far north Queensland. You can see 10 day rainfall accumulation still looking pretty ugly for parts of the Cape York Peninsula, especially around the Daintree uh, Rainforest and the Cassowary Coast. Rainfall there looking abysmal to be frank. And then across parts of the Northern Territory in WA in stark contrast to that, some good falls are expected over the next 10 days. Nothing out of the ordinary here and nothing's really sticking out like a sore thumb. So again, we will be very short and sweet with this, but the GFS is uh, definitely still being a very interesting forecast model. I know we've been talking about this for the last couple of days and I've had nothing to show on the actual forecast, but we are expecting a tropical spin up over the Solomon Islands. The GFS has been really consistent with this later on in November and into the first week of December, but I do reckon just based off the long range forecast this time, and I know this is a big stab in the dark and I don't have anything on the screen right now to show, but just based off my research into the forecast models, I reckon the first week of December is going to be a wet one for the Cape York Peninsula. I reckon and there will be plenty of rainfall uh, to talk about, plenty of stuff to talk about in terms of rainfall and potentially a tropical low somewhere in the Coral Sea as well. So it's certainly something to keep in the back of your head at this time. Uh, nothing on the forecast yet and absolutely nothing to be worrying about or panicking about at this time. It's not going to be flooding rainfall either way, uh, but certainly something that is definitely worth keeping in the back of your head if you do live along the Cape York Peninsula. Some rainfall definitely does look to be on the cards for the first week of November, uh, for the first week of December and around out November. And just to finish off the talk of rainfall and thunderstorms, and before we take a look at temperatures, I would like to talk about the potential for uh, thunderstorms, especially severe thunderstorms, beginning Saturday night across parts of WA and into the Northern Territory in South Australia. They are going to be over much uh, more inland parts of the Northern Territory, WA and into South Australia, across very rural Australia, into the, pretty much the red centre as well. So they're not uh, exactly impacting a big population centre. Still, though, Alice Springs could get some good storms Saturday night into early Sunday morning, and then under the influence of a low pressure system and a trough extending into parts of uh, South Australia, we're expecting a pretty gnarly severe thunderstorm outbreak Sunday night, uh, impacting areas like Warburton in Western Australia, Giles in Western Australia, and then across towards Yellow and Ayers Rock, across interior parts of the Northern Territory, and then down towards Mintipi, Cooper, Pedy, Udendada, and Roxby Downs into interior parts of South Australia. And some good storms certainly do look to be on the cards at this time. So if you're traveling through the area and you want a good light show, where well, you're going to be in for a treat on Sunday, but I would recommend just Yourself or getting yourself on towards the northern side of these thunderstorms here because there is a chance that roads get cut off uh, from the really heavy rainfall that's expected on Sunday night. So I'd get yourself probably out towards Alice Springs or further north into the uh, northeastern corner of South Australia. I probably wouldn't stick around Mintipi or Cooper Pedy and rely on gravel roads to get you home on Sunday night or into Monday morning. There is a chance that there are washouts and big puddles that make for some roads impassable at this time.
or currently looking at on the forecast, I should say. In terms of temperatures as well, I mean, this is the last thing that I want to be talking about, but we do have another hot day expected for Queensland. Brisbane expecting a top of 34, Gympie a top of 36, and uh, pretty high humidity values also expected for those locations. So it's going to be another stinking hot day over there. And, I mean, I could tell from the comment section yesterday, people in Brisbane and the Gold Coast were melting, so they're not used to this heat, and it certainly isn't welcome yet. It's going to be warm across interior parts of Queensland as well, out towards Huendon and for temperatures into the early 40s. Mount Isa also a top of 40 expected today. Warm across parts of the Northern Territory and into WA as well. Very warm indeed up towards 42, 43 for some of these locations. And the heat will stick around this weekend as well. It will cool off a little bit tomorrow afternoon for the southeast of Queensland and across parts of New South Wales, but into interior Queensland and the Northern Territory. Tops up to 44 degrees do look possible. So very warm indeed. And the heat is going to stick around for the next six months. Unfortunately, there's just no two ways about it. It is now the Australian summer and we're talking about these hot days every single day now across parts of Queensland and the Northern Territory. But yeah, that basically does it for the weather forecast. If you have enjoyed the video, then please do leave a like and also subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you so much for the recent support and all of the videos as well. If you've got any questions or comments, then please do leave them in the comments section down below and I'd be happy to get back to as many people as I can throughout the course of today. Um, a special shout out to the channel sponsors. The name, uh, the list just keeps on growing and I'm updating it on a daily basis, which is fantastic to see. So thank you so much for all of their support for all of their support and they're the reason why I've got access to all this fancy software to make these videos with but yeah that is all that I have time for today and I'll catch you all in the next storm goodbye